All right, brother. Hallelujah. Let's turn to, uh, we're going to study this story, and we're going to talk about this power here, okay? Because this is the same power that created the earth. And this same power is inside of you right now. The power that created the earth is inside of you. So we're going to turn to, let's go to Luke 8. We'll start with the middle of verse 42. I'm going to go really slow tonight because I think last week we plowed some ground. Last week we talked about the different soils. And, the, and this power works the best. It'll work anywhere, but as far as in our lives, it works best in the, in the, uh, in the soil, in the fertile soil. So, um, God has had different moves through the centuries. Um, you know, there was, there was Brownsville, there was Toronto, uh, there was Smithton, which are the, which are the most recent moves of God on, on that level. I think, I think Smithton was probably the last one. There's a, there's another one going on in Georgia right now. Uh, it, it's interesting. They're having, I think they have, it's a different, it's a little bitty church. It's not a. It's, it's, it's more in the spectacular uh, and display more than more than the more than the healing and the and the uh, and the salvations. Um, but Jesus was a revival. So everywhere he went, uh, revival occurred. There's 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 a couple of different anointings. One is called a resident anointing and a resident anointing is like you carry it with you all the time. But Jesus walked in. The other one is a gifting. And the gifting is given more by God, uh, you know, for any kind of a situation. So those are two distinct, different things. Um, gifting, sometimes you don't know when they're going to come. You don't know when they're going to happen. Um, you know, I think back on Steve Gray and Smithton, because I spent, um, I got a chance to visit with him uh, in Kansas City. I gave a prophetic word to his grandson, and they invited me up. It was kind of cool. But um, he was actually going to quit. He was going to go in and tell everybody he was quit. He was going to he was going to leave and go to. He, was, he already had his plan to leave his wife and go to Mexico, or something along that line. And the power of God moved in. Was that? Yeah, Steve was in Smithton, right? And since then, the night I was there, they had they were on God TV, and they had I think they had led 2,800 people to the Lord on God TV that night. God TV used to broadcast these guys live, and there was still a remnant of that power, and it comes in the form of expectation, because you'll get from God what you expect. You'll get from God what you expect. So if you come and you're not sure what you're going to get, guess what you're going to get. But as you start coming with expectation and you expect him to move, he'll move. And what occurs in these revivals is this expect people's expectation levels start to go higher. This is the confidence that we have in him that whatever we ask, he'll give us. So that's what he's talking about. He's, so, you know, we talk about single-minded all the time. We're talking about being single-minded to the things that he's told us to do, which increases our expectation. And the minute your expectation goes up, you start to change. Has anybody, does anybody here work out or has anybody here ever, ever, ever worked out? Two ways to work out. You can work out till you're, till you're sore and you kind of stop, right? Okay. So, so you go till you can't push. There's also another way to work out is you write down what you're going to do. And then you, and then you go do it. You ever done it that way? You push yourself a little further. See, the Holy Ghost to teach you in every way like that. That's called, uh, that's called uh, working out until, uh, what's it, not defeat, what's the term they use? Anyway, failure. You, you, you work out till failure. But the Holy Ghost will actually let you, for example, when I started doing push-ups and set-ups and that kind of thing, I'd start writing down how many I was going to do. And once you do that and you don't give yourself a chance to change, it starts to happen. So it's the same thing with revival. It's the same thing with God. You start... You go into partnership with him, and he almost dictates how far you can go in him. You do. You're the one that goes in. He's not going to drag you in, right? He's not going to drag you in. Okay, so let's go here. All right. Anybody have any questions? Good. I don't see anybody raising their hands. Of course, I'm not looking at you. 
Okay, verse 42. As Jesus went, okay, well, this is in the New Living Translation. As Jesus went with him, okay, here's the story. He comes back, he comes back from the other side where the madman from Gadara was. And remember, when they saw this guy in his perfect mind, I tripped him out and they asked Jesus to go. And what I find interesting is no one crossed over much because they, had, they were herding swine over there. And if you go to Israel, no one eats pork. You don't go up there asking for bacon or sausage. They'll actually throw you in jail. No, I'm teasing. They will, they will, they will give you a look. Uh, this ain't happening here. So I find that interesting. So anyway, he's come over from that side. And as he comes over, this guy comes up and asks him. He says, hey, my daughter's dying. Would you come? Because he was a revival. He carried revival. He is revival. Your revival. Ian, your revival. Your revival. Charlie's revival. So as Jesus went with him, he's going to go to this guy's house. He was surrounded by the crowds. I'm telling you, he was pushed so heavily by everybody. Everybody wanted to touch him. Everybody wanted the peace of him. Do you guys remember the videos of the old rock and roll bands back in the 70s and 60s when they first came over? How the girls are screaming and the guys are jumping up and down and everybody's trying to flock them? Well, imagine that. But one person pulls something out of him. So what was the difference? A hundred people are pushing him. How come one person pulls something out of him? She was looking for it. She was expecting. Now, the, the other ones needed it too, but they had not gone to that level. Yes, she, yeah, she, did, she did want it because she was at the end of herself. She was totally distraught, wasn't she? Right. Suggest something, and then you'll usually jump right along with it. Okay. But <clears throat> this one person, she wasn't there because everybody else was there. She was there because she believed. Okay, and and she broke a lot of rules. Uh, Karen had shared some stuff about what this woman did. She was out of money. She had, she had, she had done everything she could do to get healed. She was dirty because she had a blood disease, which over there, you can't get in the crowd. So, so she violated a couple of things, and then she pushed through. And that prior picture is her reaching out, touching the hem of his garment. And if you start looking, everybody's looking for a formula all the time. Because if you notice after that, word of that got out. Word of that got out. And if, you, if you'll start to study after that, people would come up and grab the, the, uh, the hem of his garment. You're going to be okay. I'm going to tell you why. Because you don't, listen to me, you don't quit. You don't stop. You do everything that's there. And God is going to honor what's going on with you. There's a whole shift going on right now. It's huge. There's big things going on inside of you. It's like a volcano on the inside of you. And this time, instead of it spewing and going all over, it's going to be defined and focused. It's going to come out in an anointing to help people who have mental issues. And if my son was here, I'd have you pray for him. Hallelujah. My son's back in the hospital. That's, that's a good thing, kind of. Okay. So, so as, as he went around the crowds, a woman in the crowd had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding, and she, and she could find no cure. Coming out behind Jesus. Look at that. 12 years of constant bleeding. Has your nose ever run? And run? And run? And run and run. Right. No, and they didn't have the sanitary situation that we have today. It was a rough story. She is, she's probably stuck at home, incapacitated, I'm going to guess. She can't go for it. She could find no cure. And it says in some other versions that she had gone to every doctor in the area and got worse. She spent every single dime she had. She's trying to get help. We've been there, haven't we? You ever try to get off drugs, get off alcohol, get off something? On your own? It's hard. It's hard. You need help. Coming up behind Jesus, she touched the fringe of his robe, 
and immediately the bleeding stopped. And it says here uh, in the in the uh, New American Standard it says, and a woman had a, who had a hemorrhage for twelve years and could not be healed by anyone came up behind him and touched the friend of his fringe of his cloak, and immediately her hemorrhage stopped. Now I want you to look at what Jesus said. What did Jesus say at this point? We all we all know the story. What did he say, Ian? Who touched me, right? Yeah. So wait a minute. There's a hundred people pushing up against him. One hundred people pushing up against him, but one person touches him and it moves him. So what's the difference? I'm going to give you a hint. It had nothing to do with him because he didn't know what happened. It was her faith. And her faith was what? Was it double-minded or was it single-minded? If you want to get your prayers answered, specifically put down what you're looking for and don't waver. See, we all know what we don't want. We don't know what we do want. Hoped for. Yes. And it, and it became the evidence. So her faith, check it out. Her faith became the evidence that she had it. I, I have coffee in this cup. This cup is the evidence that I have coffee. So, so I'm holding coffee now, right? I've got coffee with me. So when I drink it, I've got coffee with me. That's faith. It's the evidence that I have it. Okay. So Jesus says, who... Who touched me? So there's a hundred people pushing against him, right? They want a miracle, but one woman's got a specific thing. Very, very, very specific. And she touches him. Do you think she knew she was going to receive whenever she touched him? She broke every single rule in the book. She broke at least three rules. How many rules did she break? She was bleeding, which was she was not clean. She was pushing through so she, so she couldn't come to the crowd. And what else? She touched him. She wants it pretty bad. She pushed his button. It's kind of like I see it, you know, we have positive reinforcement training and stuff like that. Taking it out of here or there or wherever. That God gets so much pleasure out of us. He gets excited. If you could see in heaven, he's jumping up and down. He's excited because they're using faith finally. Hallelujah. Okay. So the first one, she she can't she's she's bleeding, so she's unclean. Then she gets into the, into the crowd. That's rules. And the third one was what? Jesus. Yeah. I'll tell you, it's interesting. When you want it so bad that you'll do whatever to get it, you'll get it. You know, you know how many times? Every single time they received. Because in his own hometown, it's just Woody. Come on, we know Woody. Yeah, you can pray if you want, but nothing's going to happen. You ever done that? And what happens when you pray usually? Nothing ever happens. But someone that says to you, I'll be healed whenever you pray for me, almost 100% of the time they'll get up. If the people who you're praying for will join in with you, because look at every, okay, this woman came to Jesus. The man came to Jesus. The demoniac ran to Jesus. The crowds were so strong that he had to get on a boat so that he wouldn't be thronged. I mean, come on, when you got to preach out in a river because people are thronging, they're expecting. Okay, so let's keep going. Let's go to verse 45 again. Who touched me, Jesus asked. Everyone denied it. And Peter said, Master, this whole crowd is pressing against you. Come on. Who knows who touched you? But, but, but look at what Jesus says in verse 46. But Jesus said, someone deliberately touched me for I felt healing power go out of me. I don't like that translation as much uh, as in the New American Standard. It's a little more accurate to me. It says, because I felt power come out of me. Yes, it was healing power, but it was also, it was also power, right? So we can, yes, it is healing power, but we can also call it power came out of him. Now, 
When the woman realized that she could not stay hidden, why can't she stay hidden? Yes. Okay, so she's gone how long sick? She's bled every single day for how long? She's totally healed. What is she doing right now? She's making a scene, probably. It's pretty obvious something has happened, right? Have you guys ever seen Mexican jumping beans? You guys remember when you were a kid, you had those? I don't know what makes them jump, and I don't need to know right now. You can tell me later. But it was really cool to just watch those. So I can just see this woman doing that, right? When the real, whenever the woman realized she couldn't stay hidden, she began to tremble and fell to her knees in front of him. Man, she is thankful. Do you know where your place of victory is? If, even if it hasn't manifested yet, this is your place of victory right here. You start walking him thinking. Now faith is the evidence. So we don't go speak what the problem is. We speak what we're looking for. Right? So, Father, I thank you that I'm healed. Father, I thank you that, that, that I operate in that ministry. Father, I thank you that whatever. Right? You already, you already act. Anybody can look at circumstances and say it's bad. But it's the person who says... I'm going to be moved just like Abraham. I mean, think about Abraham. He's a hundred years old and they come up to him and they go, Hey, you're going to have kids. And he's like, really? Okay. That's a, that's a good one. But what did he, it said he staggered not at the promises of God. Okay. Any thoughts on that? She laughed at him. Yeah. Well, she was 90. I mean, you know. Because I find it interesting that she knew that she was healed from that particular condition because as a woman that that had to have been a tremendous jolt of power to go from bleeding to not bleeding because it in the natural it just doesn't work that way mm -mm. all of us who've all the women here know what I mean. All the men. It doesn't just. Your, all the men will, will. We will agree with it, but it, we can't relate to it. Right, right. But I, am I am I correct, ladies? For it to just stop. It, is it, pretty for amazing. it to just stop because it deal. doesn't just work like that. Okay. It 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 slows down and then it quits. But to know that you're walking along, and all of a sudden it just stops. I mean that is that cool is stuff. such a miracle. Wow. Right. Okay, so she's, so she's on her knees. She's pretty excited. The whole crowd heard her explain. Check it out. The whole crowd heard her explain why she touched him. Just like the madman from Gadara. He said, go tell your story. Do you know how you win people? Go tell your story. I was like you, man. Well, I don't say it like that. Everybody's so sensitive anymore. I used to have this. This is People want to hear stories, right? I want to, I want to hear a story. Because stories are amazing, you know? Check it out. So she, she wanted to explain why she had touched him, and she, she had been immediately healed. Daughter, he said to her, my faith has made you whole. Whose? Whose? Her faith. Ian's faith. Woody's faith. Sue's faith. Bettina's faith, her faith, Dale's faith, your faith has made her whole. It's up to us. That's up to us. Single-minded. Up to us, right? Go in. When's the last time you think she had peace? 12 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. But. You're right. That would be a gift. Which is true. And sometimes God will move off of your gift. I Ask Smith Wigglesworth. Ask A.E. Allen, Jack Coe, Oral Roberts. You name it. Those guys all had it. Now, here's, here's what I want you to see. Power came out of her. She had power came out of Jesus, right? 
Okay, so let's go on down. So I keep that in mind. And by the way, that's the same power. That's the exact same power that is, um, that is it's, it's called dunamis power. And it's the same exact power that created the earth. Now I've heard, and I don't know if this is true, but I've heard this is the, this is the root word for dynamite. Is that true? So dynamite power is pretty powerful, I would imagine, right? It could probably blow a hole in this wall. So that kind of power is operating in us right now. You see that? Okay, so let's go to verse, let's go to chapter 9. Go on to the beginning of it, Cody. Okay, let's go on, let's go on, I mean, Karen, go on to chapter 9. Keep going up. No, all you got to do is just keep going up. There you go. Now, now, I want you to look at this. One day, Jesus called together his 12 disciples. Are, are you guys a disciple of Jesus? Because why? Why are you a disciple of Jesus? You believe because why? Ah, there we go. Okay. Remember he said he was, he was, he was over many brethren? That's us. Okay, check it out. One day Jesus called together Dale and Ian and Woody. And he gave them what? And what? To do what? Okay, this is the same word that was up in verse in chapter 8. It's the same word. It's still dunamis. He stuck dunamis power inside of us. You can see that. Does that sound too fantastic? The same power that created the earth is inside you. you see, that's, that's even more amazing that they walked in that at that time because they didn't even have what we have. No, they didn't. That's, that's, a, that's, that's a great point. Let's see what happened to them. Then he sent them out to tell everyone about the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. T.L. Osborne, you guys probably don't know who T.L. Osborne was. He was in Africa in the 50s. Dr. Osborne, amazing man, amazing man. He called it miracle evangelism. He said, get people healed first and then share the gospel with them. Come on, God heals you. The least you can do is get born again. I mean, come on. Look what he says. Take nothing for your journey. What, what does he mean there? Take nothing for your journey. How about this? Don't become double-minded. Just go do what he told you to do. Don't go figure it out. Just go do. Share your story. You, you guys notice that if you ask God to bring somebody to you today, does it, he always brings somebody, doesn't he? And, the, and, it's just, and it comes in the craziest way possible. He instructed them, don't take a walking stick, a traveler's bag, food, money, or even a change of clothes. Don't overthink it. Go do it. Have fun with this thing. You got dunamis power inside you. Get out there and see what happens. So today I pray, and, and it'll come the craziest way possible, right? So today, um, my son went back into the hospital. Um, I get a call from somebody. I don't know who he is. It's a strange number. And he goes, this is so-and-so. I, I don't want uh, to scare you, but your son's been living here. And is he mentally ill? I was like, well, I mean, you could say that. I mean, he, you know. So this guy's talking to me, and he tells me this morning, he said that somebody had come at him with an axe and tried to shoot him with a gun. They shot him in the hand. He just got out of the hospital, but he was trying to protect his house. And he's trying to start a marijuana growing business. And he's calling me to try to talk to me about my son. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, is this not an opportunity? I'm trying to prep for you know church, and here's a guy calling me, telling me this story. And I said, hey man, tell me about how you got born again. Might as well, right? I got him on the phone. So he starts telling me the story. And I said, uh, okay, cool. He, he's not ready yet. His name is CJ. First time CJ called, I was so busy. I said, I can't talk to you. And I hung up. You ever done that? Too busy? Too busy? Holy Ghost started convicting me immediately. I call him back. I said, I'm sorry for being rude. My apologies. Start sharing the gospel with him. 
Now, I don't know if he'll get born again or not, but you know what? We watered plant. We watered. So in my mind, I'm overthinking it, right? I'm busy. I got to get, I got to get to church. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to do this. I got to do that. Instead of just simply just going and sharing the gospel. What do you guys think? Now, look here. Wherever you go, stay in the same house until you leave town. So be happy where you are in God right now. Don't wish for something else. Be happy where God has you right now. Plant, grow where you're planted. When we start looking too much about what we don't have, when we start looking in the future to this place we're going to go to, you know what we do? We walk past all these people we can help. Stay in the same house until you leave. And if a town refuses to welcome you, shake its dust from your feet as you leave to show them that you've abandoned those people to their fate. I don't quite like that translation. <laughs> Sounds a little brutal. But you know what? Don't, what he's saying is don't get hung up. You ever shared the gospel and someone didn't want to hear it? Don't get hung up. So what? Like the time I picked the guy up in the car. I don't know if I told you guys this. The Lord said, pick this guy up and I'm going to hurry. I pick him up. He gets in the car. So the Lord says, tell him about me. I said, okay, great. So I start talking to him. He goes, listen, if you're going to share the gospel, pull the car over right now. I don't want anything to do with it. I don't want to hear a thing you got to say. And he used colorful metaphors, too. So I was like, okay. So as he gets out, I said, well, somebody loves you. Have a great day, whatever. And I'm thinking the whole time, what was that about? So the Holy Ghost says to me, what did you want? Did you want somebody that was going to get born again and become the next Billy Graham? I was like, well, yeah, kind of. Then he said, if Brad Clymer wouldn't have picked me up, I would have never been born again. And now we've led all these people to the Lord and thank God for Brad Clymer. Is that what you wanted? And I was like, well, yeah, kind of. So what am I doing? I'm carrying clothes and changes. So what happened was as he got out of the car, you know what the Lord said to me? He said, some plants need to be watered. We just watered this plant. That's all we did. So look here. So they began the circuit of the villages, preaching the good news and healing the sick. So that was no difference. What they did here is exactly the same as Jesus did because Jesus, Jesus prayed for them and sent them out just like he's done you. He's prayed for us and sent us out. So do you guys see that? Dunamis power. They took, okay, and you just said they didn't have what we have. But the power they had, they still preached the gospel, got people born again, and, and uh, healed the sick. Still did it. They had revival, in other words, wherever they went. Now, let's go to, let's go to Luke 7. And I want to show you the best example of authority. Luke 7, verse 1. So we're talking about the power within us. So how do you loose the power within you? What do you do? Speak it. What else? Speak it is excellent. That's really good. Expect it. What else? Who else has anything on that? Worship. How about, how about become aware of it? The, the creator of heaven and earth is inside me. If one delays hands on somebody, they will get healed. Because if Jesus did, they did, right? So Jesus is in Wanda, walking on this earth. Jesus is in, is in Woody. He's, he's in Billy. Now, now, look here. When Jesus had finished saying all of this to the people, he returned to Capernaum. At that time, the highly valued slave of a Roman officer was sick and near death. Is that a, that's not a good situation, right? When the officer heard about Jesus, he sent some respected Jewish elders to ask him to come and heal his slave. So he's just saying, what's the difference here in, in Jairus' daughter who was dead and Jesus raised her up? Anything different here? He's asking Jesus to come, right? For one case, we have Jesus walking and a woman pulls it out of him and gets healed. The next case, we have Jesus praying for, praying for his outpouring, and they go out and they all have miracles. They have a revival. No, he was praying for his disciples, right? Now we've got a third case, three different cases. 
near death. When the officer heard about Jesus, he sent some respected Jewish elders to ask him to come and heal his slave. So they earnestly begged Jesus to help the man. If anyone deserves your help, he does, they said. And in, uh, in, the, in the New American Standard, it says, For he loves our nation, and it was he who built our synagogue. So this is a powerful man, right? He built their church. And I wonder if this is the synagogue in Jerusalem. Do you, do you guys know? May not, no, 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 because he's in, he's in, he's in Capernaum. The synagogue in, in Capernaum is about, it's about as big as this room here to the back. It's about like that. It's about this big. That's how big it is. We always have these pictures of this, of this you know, like if you watch uh, Charlton Heston movies and Moses and all that kind of thing, you see those big, all those big synagogues and all that kind of stuff. It was big in Jerusalem, but in these smaller towns, it, you know, it wasn't so large. So Jesus went with them, but just before they arrived at the house, the officer sent some friends to say, Lord, don't trouble yourself by coming to my home, for I'm not worthy of such an honor. Now, wait a minute. He asked him to come, but now he's asking him not to come. So what's going on here? But see, but he, okay, say that again. He's questioning, questioning whether he's worthy enough to ask for the healing. So whenever the officer heard about Jesus, he heard about him. He sent some respected Jewish elders to ask him to come and heal his slave. So then he says, so, so then he says, don't trouble yourself by coming to my home for I'm not worthy of such an honor. I'm not even worthy to come out and meet you. Does this man see something? Why, why is he saying that? Why is he saying that he's not even worthy to come out and, and, and meet them? Why is he saying that? Okay, so, so look at this. Just say the word. Hey, you can't steal my thunder, dude. Just say the word from, from, from where you are, and my servant will be healed. Think about that. Just say the word and my servant will be healed. Jesus doesn't even come to his house and his servant's going to be healed. So can you release dunamis power by just your words? Over the telephone. How about this? We got somebody over a text. We did a text and somebody got born again over a text. Just say the word and my servant will be healed. I know this because I'm under the authority of my superior officers and I have authority over my soldiers. So we've, inter we've introduced a new word, authority. Now, if you want to, okay, so, so let's go back to when Jesus was talking to the people. Remember, Dale, Jesus is going back and he's talking to the disciples that he's going to send out. And he says, I give you power and authority so power so let me ask you this does power come with understanding authority so <laughs> let's go down this rabbit hole have we taken the offering yet should have taken the offering first so i wonder since we don't understand authority why we don't have very good results when we pray for people. I wonder if we're acting out of authority all through the week, and then all of a sudden we're going to get ready to pray for somebody and we jump back into authority. So we walk around double-minded all week long, arguing with our... If you argue in the Army and you're in the Navy, I would assume that if you argued there was a thing called the brig, right? What was the brig? Jail. I wonder, I wonder sometimes why we blame the devil. Should I go here? <laughs> and maybe it's us to some degree. 
What do you guys think? He always gives you an option. So let me ask you about this centurion. Let's, let's keep going. Go ahead. The enemy has no authority. Jesus said, I, I have given you all authority. All authority has been given to me. And I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means harm you. The, the only way that the enemy can do anything to us is if we yield our authority. We actually give away our power. I wonder if we're doing that. And how do we do it? So let's go read this again. Excellent point. Excellent point. Thanks, John. Thanks, Karen. Excellent points. Look at verse 7. I'm not worthy to come and meet you. Just say the word where you are and my servant will be healed. I know this because I am under authority of my superior officers. And I have authority over my soldiers. I only need to say go and they go. Come and they come. And if I say to my slaves do this, they do it. Now look at this. If you can amaze Jesus, you've done something pretty powerful. This is a guy that created heaven and earth. And if you can amaze him, you're on the right track. Look at verse 9. When Jesus heard this, he was, say it, amazed. Turning to the crowd that was following him, he said, I tell you, I haven't seen faith like this in all Israel. I've never seen faith like this. And when the officer's friends returned to his house, they found the slave was completely healed so is this centurion giving up his authority no not at all so my question to you is this do we have the right to go around we do have the right because you have a free will you have a free will but the minute you start entertaining something else besides what the Holy Ghost has told you what's going to happen you're going to get the results of that. Have you ever tried to multitask and hike? It's not smart. It's not twisting my ankle. I'm multitasking. I'm double-minded. I'm walking and stepping into a hole. Whose fault is that? So Holy Ghost tells me something. He says, by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. He says, go set the captives free. He's telling you, go set the captives free. Freely I give, you give, Right? So what does that mean? Does that, does that mean that I get to debate it and say it doesn't work? I mean, I can, but what kind of, what kind of results am I going to get? On your hand, what did you do to get your hand to heal, to get that bone to pop back into place? Which were? She spoke the word, speak the word only, and my bones will be healed. Hallelujah. And you know. So if you wonder what's going on in this country, to, to a degree, is if I can't honor the president or people in authority, how am I going to honor the Holy Ghost? It's a simple thing. You know, if I go into a guy's restaurant, Charlie talked the other day about he was in, a, he was in his restaurant, somebody was talking belligerent to a waitress. When I was growing up, you never did that. I don't ever remember anybody being disrespectful to anybody. I can remember getting a swat at, at school. So guess what I got when I got home? I got another one. Because my dad knew that if I got a swat, there was a reason. He didn't go to school and sue the school. Okay, I know I'm dating myself, and I'm sorry for you millennials. But it's the truth. We don't understand authority, so we question everything. Jesus included. Because we don't see it. Right? We're so captivated by what's in front of us that we're not... So this is more real than the word of God. Okay, have I meddled enough? Is it time to quit? Move on. Hallelujah. Let's just, let's go to one more scripture that I'm done. Let's go to Hebrews 13, 8. Same. 
You guys can read it with me. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change. So the Jesus, because if you, if you, if you look at the next place here, you don't have to go back there, Karen. This is fine. But, but if you go on past the centurion, listen to this. Soon afterward, Jesus went with his disciples into the village of Nain. And this is a small village. You can still see Nain. And a large crowd followed who? Jesus. Why are they following him? They want to know more. And they've actually tasted the miracles. They're following the miracles more than anything. Oh, and they, but no, but there is a good point there, Renee, because they also said, you teach as one with authority, not as the scribes and Pharisees. A funeral procession was coming out as he approached the village gate. The young man who had died was, was a widow's only son, and a large crowd from the village was with her. When the Lord saw her, his heart overflowed with compassion. He had a heart. He didn't see people like, okay, this, is, this person's white, this person's black, this person's rich, this person's poor, this person's educated, this person's not educated, this person has body art, this person doesn't. He didn't see that. He saw the heart the whole time. He judged, he didn't judge anybody. He just observed and he did it by heart. If, I got to tell you, the quickest way to get your heart right, as quick as it can possibly be, is to ask the Holy Ghost to help you lead people to the Lord. Because you know what he'll do? First thing he'll do, he'll lead you to people you don't even relate to. So come up here for a minute. Come up here for a minute. You, yeah, come up here. Okay, let's take your hat off. So what do he and I have in common? Jesus. <laughs> exactly. Hallelujah. So when I was asking the Lord, I said, how do I reach this generation, right? And after Charlie invited me over and we went over there and we prayed and he gets born again, full of the Holy Ghost, gets set free and he's, he got turned on and his button broke off on high. As I was walking back to the car, the Lord said, you still have questions about how you reach this generation? I'm like, I'm sorry. See, see with man, it's not possible. With God, all things are possible. So let's back up on this. So we're talking about carrying dunamis power, the power that, the power that created the earth, heaven and earth is inside of Hannah, right? Is she the only one that has it? Who else has it? Wanda has it. Who else has it? And I don't, uh, you, you have it, you have it, you have it, you have it. Okay. So now do we understand authority? So if the Bible says all things are possible, is that a suggestion? Is that the same as if you're in Vietnam and they're shooting at you and you jump in the foxhole? Or, or can you debate it? What? You can debate it. So I wonder sometimes when we don't get our, our stuff answered like we think, I wonder if we're questioning authority. Either it is or it isn't. And there's a process for things to occur. You got you to understand, if you're standing in authority, sometimes it takes a while for things to occur, right? So if Woody and I walk 50 miles this way, we decide to go back, we repent and turn around. So we're going to head back. How far away are we still? 50 miles. <laughs> How long is it going to take us to come back? It's going to take a while, right? And if God gives us a miracle, which is somebody comes by in a car or a helicopter and picks us up and takes us back, that's awesome, right? But in the process, it's gonna, you've got to walk it back out again. Does that make sense? That's why God, God heard you the first time you prayed. Who was the guy that fought with the angel? Jacob. Jacob, Jacob had to have an attitude adjustment. Yes. I wonder if we have to have attitude adjustments once in a while. And then sometimes we have to persevere and just keep, keep going as Daniel because the answer was sent. It just took 21 days for it to get there. So what do we do in between? Because this is all good. This is all fine and dandy. But what do you do if Woody and Brad are 50 miles out and you're like, okay, what do we do in the meantime? And we start to waver. How do you wait? How do you wait on God? Prayer. Prayer. Worship. Pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. Believe. 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 What else? Faith. 
Faith. Stand fast. Stand fast, having done all to stand, Amen. stand. Do everything Amen. and stand. Be, being still, which is, which is about being aware. So here's the thing. We're more aware of the circumstances than we are the, the freedom. I'm more, I'm more aware of my disease than I am aware. See, I called it my disease. I'm more aware of my disease than I am freedom. I'm more aware of my addiction. Than I am walking free. I'm more aware that we don't have revival yet than I am aware that we have revival. See, we're go- we, we are having revival. It's already started. We prayed for it, so it's happening. It's going to happen in this state. But think about this. You can't choose your relations. Just because you're, just because you're a relation with somebody doesn't mean that you're their friend. You ever have a brother or sister you couldn't stand? Were you their friend? No. But then I got a, I got, I got people here that I know that if I was in the Greece and was on the other side of the world and I made one phone call, they'd come get me. We're not even related, supposedly. So what happens when you make a family unit your friend? So see, you can be related to Jesus. You can be related to the Holy Ghost, but he wants to be our friend. He's doing whatever he can to make us his friend. But who's the one holding back? Who's the one not understanding authority? Who's the one not understanding the power we walk in? Wow, look in the mirror. Ah, man, I, I'm sorry, Wanda. You, I think you started this. I think you did. Yeah, because you sent that thing on identity. I'll tell you your identity. Your identity is hidden Christ. And the reason it's hidden, Christ, is you don't know what to do with it. You have no idea what to do with your identity. So how do I go find my identity? If you want to go find your identity, how do you go find it? See God, but how do you do it? There's a scripture for it. Say it. What's that? Pursue the word. Remember the scripture? I look in a glass darkly. But then face to face, I go to a mirror. I go to a mirror and I look in the mirror. Oh, that's what I look like. And then it says, but then he turns away and he forgets who he was. Uh Uh-oh, what do you got to do? Go back and look in the mirror again. Here's your mirror, guys. Here's your mirror. Yeah, absolutely. He hid your identity in him. It's here. Here's your identity. This is who you are. This is it. Hey, thanks for watching today. Uh, Enjoyed the time with you. Uh, If you need prayer or if you need uh, somebody to stand with you in agreement, uh, give us a call or come to hisoutpouring.com or you can send an email to brad at hisoutpouring.com. So every Saturday at 6.30, go to hisoutpouring.com. You'll see a link to the service where you can tie in with us. Uh, you You can come to see us here in Wyoming. We meet every Saturday at 6 o'clock. You're more than welcome to join us. So have a great week, and we'll see you next week.